Uh, hey everyone, let's uh, continue with uh, our last session, which is the panel session, during which all of you can share your questions in the chat and our doctors will answer. Um, so I'm assuming most of us are back here. So to end the CGS KSA series, we will be conducting a panel session where you'll be able to ask any burning questions that you might have. Uh, our speakers are Dr. Abdulaziz Bakshween, who is, who is a PGY1 general surgery resident at uh, KFMC, Dr. Man Awad, who is a PGY1 internal medicine resident at KSMC, and, and uh, Dr. Mariam Salama, who is a PGY1 pediatrics resident at uh, KFSH and RC. Um, feel free to start asking questions now, either by unmuting or by sending questions in the chat. Assalamu alaikum, Masa al khair. How are you all? Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dr. Uh, we have uh, a few questions which we have pulled from the students beforehand. So I will start by reading out those questions. Meanwhile, the audience can uh, put in their own questions in the chat. So I will start with uh, the first one. Um, what advice would you give to those who are still in medical school and what would you change about your medical school journey up until residency? Okay, I'll, uh, I'll go first. Uh, and uh, the other speaker, anything to add, please uh, uh, feel free. Uh, so uh, maybe going back to medical school, uh, I would maybe focus more on uh, research, especially towards the final years. Uh, you do want to uh, reach the level before the applications uh, and they're still waiting for publication and you have other things to do. You have to worry about your electives. You have to worry about the letters of recommendation. So if you can't start uh, that process early on, get it over with, get it done. It's going to help you a lot. Uh, another thing, uh, whenever you have, when, whenever there is a volunteering opportunity in the university and mashallah, our university, I mean, they have, they carry out a lot, a lot of events and a lot of I mean, uh, you know, volunteering campaigns. Uh, so just sign up for these and, you know, uh, get, a, get, get a certificate, okay, because it's going to help you in, in the application process. Uh, it's going to secure, like, easily five, five points, six points, uh, just by participating in these uh, activities. So, again, uh, because uh, if, if you start your internship and you, you don't have, you know, uh, these volunteering, uh, volunteering uh, certificates, you're going to be scrambling to find one. At the same time, you have to worry about the SMLE. At the same time, you have to worry about research. At the same time, you have to worry about, you know, uh, uh, finding uh, letters of recommendation and impressing the doctors. So uh, these things you can, you know, do early on and just get them over with. Okay, okay. thank you. Um, there is another question from the forms that we had asked the audience to fill at the beginning. And two of them are regarding um, whether non-Saudi students have a chance to get matched to the residency program in KSA and are all specialists, uh, sorry, are all spe specialists allowed? So uh, the question is asking about the, uh, the chance of getting accepted into residency or, uh, or what? Yeah, for like non-Saudi uh, non students, is it possible for them to get matched in uh, the kingdom? Yeah. From what I know, uh, and from my experience of some some friends, uh, it's difficult to uh, to be accepted uh, because uh, I think priority is given to, uh, to to Saudi you know Saudi graduates, uh, and uh, if there are available seats, this is what I know. If there are available seats and available positions that are unfilled, then they might consider you know uh, non Saudis. Uh, even if you have, you know, good scores and, you know, excellent CV, usually the priority is given to uh, to those who are, uh, you know, uh, those who are Saudi. Uh, and the possibility the possibility of having a seat unfilled uh, is, is usually low. Usually, most seats most seats are are, are going to be filled by the end of the matching process. Uh, Dr. Man, do, Dr. Mariam, do you have anything to add to them? Yeah, hey, uh, I agree with uh, my colleague, Dr. Bakhashwin. Uh, it's kind of hard to, as non-Saudi, to get accepted in Saudi residency. Uh, however, I don't think it's 100% uh, yani, of the table because I saw some 
Nan Saudi resident in SMC, I think, and uh, Della Hospital. But it's kind of, they, they were uh, R5, R4. So uh, this was يعني, an old uh, res- residence. So I don't know about recent stuff. I didn't see anyone. يعني. So it's kind of difficult, but it's not, not impossible. Yes, uh, I have the same information that uh, in the past, I think uh, they were accepting uh, non-Saudis. However, um, in the recent years, I, don't, I think that this has become much more limited. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, uh, I'm not aware of any examples of uh, uh, non-Saudis being accepted in a residency program um, in recent years. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, we have two questions in the chat. Dr. Mariam, would, uh, would you like to answer them? Uh, I think the first one uh, is asking about uh, if, if it's possible to, to wait. Where is the question? Leo, <laughs> before uh, year five, right? The research. Yes. Yeah, as I know, it's it's okay. Uh, there is no no limited date or no يعني, specific date to of, of the research. Is it right? This is what I know. Okay. Even the volunteering, I think it's kind of uh, need to be in recent five years. So yeah. if even if it's um, less than who are year five, it's it, I think it will be accepted. Yeah, what I know is that for, for, for research, there is no limit, there is no time limit for the research. You can, even if you publish it in year one, it's still going to be accepted, it's going to be counted. But for volunteering, I think it should be within the last five years, uh, you know, from the time of application, five years back, that, that, that's the limit. Uh, and the, one of our questions from the form was, uh, among the different resources that you mentioned, uh, what is the best one to stick to in your opinion? Uh, it's very difficult to answer that question. Uh, you know, which resource is the best? But I think stick to one. If you, if you, if you feel comfortable with one, just stick to it. Uh, this is what I think, you know. Uh, so, if, for example, if you find, for example, glory, the glory, you know, collections are good for you and uh, you find yourself, you know, uh, getting along with the questions and, you know, uh, you have no problem in understanding the questions and understanding their answers, then just stick to that. Uh, I think, in my opinion, you know, that's, that's a good strategy. Some people might do different, you know, uh, uh, they, they do as much as possible, you know, they do as much resources as possible. But I think with that is uh, you're going to have uh, different answers in different collections. Some people think this is the right answer. Some people think, you know, B is the right answer. So, uh, it can create confusion for you and might waste your time uh, try, just trying to find the correct answer. Uh, Dr. Mahan, Dr. Mariam, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, I agree with Dr. Abdelaziz. Uh, <clears throat> personally speaking, I prefer to limit my resources. When it comes to studying any kind of exam, I try to limit my resources so that uh, I don't get confused. So if you stick to one or two, um, resources or question banks, I think uh, that's going to be uh, your best option. Otherwise, uh, it will be uh, really confusing to go over different uh, question banks, and there are a lot of them. Uh, Thank you, Doctor. Uh, We have a question in the chat, and it says, uh, can we get salary reimbursement from internship year? And if yes, how? Dr. Mohan, I think, uh, can answer that. Oh, all right. So, <clears throat> um, so uh, in uh, previous years, um, يعني أعتقد إنه في قرار هو في قرار uh, من سنة ألف وأربعمية يمكن ثلاثة أو أربعة uh, هجري uh, that interns get uh, salary. Because they are working in uh, hospitals. Uh, however, 
in recent years, um, they stopped giving salary to graduates from private medical schools. Um, however, up until uh, our batch, uh, for those who um, who got enrolled in uh, private medical schools and they got a scholarship from the Ministry of Health, um, if you raise a lawsuit against the Ministry of Health with the aid of a lawyer, uh, for the most part, you can get, uh, you can win the case and you get the uh, reimbursement. However, uh, some of my colleagues, including uh, Dr. Abdelaziz, uh, who were enrolled in uh, private medical schools after uh, stopping the scholarships from Ministry of Health, I believe that uh, they were unable to get the reimbursement. So, um, however, I know a couple of uh, my colleagues who are still uh, trying to do uh, to um, you know win the cases and get reimbursement, even though that they did not have a scholarship from Ministry of Health. But I'm not sure if uh, if things are going well with them. So, basically speaking, if um, you have a scholarship from the Ministry of Health, then yes, you can get the reimbursement by uh, basically raising a lawsuit against the Ministry of Health and uh, most probably you will win and you get the reimbursement. Uh, however, if you don't have the scholarship from Ministry of Health, it will be very difficult. And I don't know any cases in which, you know, um, uh, those who raised the lawsuit um, uh, won, won the case. You mean uh, Ministry of Education, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ministry of Education, sorry. Yeah, if you have a lot of people who are in the Ministry of Education, إذا هو يعني في جامعة خاصة عنده منحة وزارة التعليم المفروض أن وزارة التعليم تعطيك راتب خلال مدة الامتياز إذا ما عندك منحة وزارة التعليم ما راح يعطوك شيء وأتوقع هذا الشيء خلاص يعني إحنا كنا آخر دفعة أنا أتوقع دفعة دي كانت آخر دفعة جاتها منح من وزارة التعليم This is what I know فالمفروض السؤال ده ما ينسأل <تصفيق> يعني خلاص <تصفيق> طب ليش الجماعة ما يفكوا المايكات ويسألوا كده ما إيش اللي يعني في الشات الشات صراحة ماني عارفة شكلي صرت عجوزة ولا ايش ما ماني قادرة اوصل له مرة حاجة غريبة فلو تفتحوا المايكات وتسألوا يعني اسهل في سؤال there is a question I think regarding summer training in my preferred specialty will it make it will it make a difference if I took it here in Saudi or abroad like in the UK or the US will that strengthen my CV and interest or not what might be the advantage of taking a training outside Saudi? So, uh, uh, if, if you are, يعني, uh, if your primary goal is to be accepted here in Saudi, I think, you know, getting a training opportunity here in Saudi during the summer is maybe a better option because at least the, the department will know you. They will know that you're, that you're interested in that specialty uh, and you'll work with them in the summer. And then again, you'll work with them in, during internship so they will remember you. Uh, when it comes to interviews and ranking. Uh, however, if you have a training opportunity outside, like in the US, it's an excellent opportunity. It, it, of course, it, it, it will strengthen your CV. It will give you, uh, uh, you know, c- connections outside. You might have even letters of recommendation from outside. Uh, and this can help you uh, if you are uh, trying to pursue you know, residency abroad uh, or maybe even fellowship abroad after you finish your uh, Saudi board. Uh, however, like when it comes to uh, uh, getting accepted here in Saudi, I'm not entirely uh, sure or positive about this uh, because some programs, they might not uh, appreciate that or they might see it as, uh, as a chance for you to, uh, you know, to be connected outside and maybe uh, leave, leave the program and, uh, uh, and go there, you know, go go abroad. What do you think, Dr. Man? Yes, I agree with your uh, answer, Dr. Abdelaziz. Um, I think um, the 
uh, training opportunities that are provided at Al Faisal, they are really exceptional during the summer. Um, I think it's a chance to um, interact with uh, people from different cultures and to get exposed to a different, you know, um, background. Uh, it's also a chance to get exposed to, um, you know, how people practice medicine or uh, do research um, in other countries. So uh, I think it's a great opportunity and uh, you can learn a lot and develop uh, yourself um, <clears throat> in many aspects such as communication skills. And as Dr. Abdelaziz said, uh, you can also establish long-term re relationships that can help you later on. Uh, so it's uh, definitely a great uh, you know, opportunity that we have at Al Faisal. Uh, if you can uh, you know, benefit from those opportunities. Um, however, uh, in terms of you know, enhancing your uh, chances to get accepted here, um, I don't think that uh, they would play a major role. Um, uh, and, you know, uh, getting accepted into a residency program here in Saudi Arabia, because at the end of the day, what's most important is that you do um, an elective or a rotation in the specialty of your interest in, you know, the center or the program uh, that you are uh, interested in. Um, our next question is, uh, did you find the transition between medical school and residency challenging? Actually, yeah, it is very challenging, to be honest, because, uh, you know, in medical school and internship, you're used to, you know, uh, having someone uh, to direct you, to guide you, to uh, uh, be there with you all the time. There, there are not much responsibilities. Uh, that are on your shoulder that, that you have to carry, you know. Uh, but when it comes to residency, you are the first line. Like literally, you are the first line when it comes to patient management and you know patient interaction. Uh, you know, uh, uh, so you are you are you become a responsible physician. Uh, the, the patients when, when when you interact with them, they will take your word for whatever you say. Uh, you have to manage patients sometimes by yourself. You will have on calls and uh, uh, you'll have long hours. Uh, it's, it's, it's very different from, from medical school, very different. I think uh, that this is where the internship year benefit uh, comes in, uh, actually, because uh, yes, it's very different, uh, very different from medical school. Um, and that's why uh, internship year is very important. And it's up to you um, if you want to do you know, um, rotations in uh, places where you can develop your uh, clinical skills and uh, enhance your knowledge. Uh, because uh, honestly, for the most part, as graduate, uh, graduates of Al Faisal, and since that uh, most of our rotations in the clinical years are in uh, KFSH, um, we don't really, you know, um, carry uh, some responsibility. Uh, while we are students. Um, however, um, I highly suggest and highly recommend that during your internship to do rotations outside of uh, KFSH in order to, you know, get exposed to different um, environment, uh, get to work and um, kind of, you know, start to uh, develop this sense of uh, responsibility and it gives you confidence. Uh, like, I remember the first day of my internship with uh, Abdelaziz and then the end of internship and it is totally different. I think that we have uh, changed a lot from the start of internship to the end of internship. And don't worry about it. Yani, this is going to come with time. Just do your best. And um, as graduates of Al Faisal, I can reassure you that your uh, level um, is going to be really good um, and programs will be impressed by your uh, performance um, and you know just don't worry about it uh, all what you have to do is you know do your best and inshallah everything will be uh, fine uh, 
But during your, your internship, try to do, you know, rotations that uh, in which you can, you know, um, uh, get some, you know, exposure, uh, hands-on exposure, such as, you know, emergency medicine. Um, most of the emergency medicine uh, rotations, uh, you get to know, uh, you, you get to work and uh, have hands-on experience. And this, you know, um, gives you uh, confidence and uh, makes you, you know, confident uh, in yourself and inshallah when you once you join uh, residency um, you will be fine i remember uh, that the program director in uh, our first day of uh, residency um, he told us that what's important for him is the attitude your attitude is the most important thing and that knowledge will come with time so don't worry about the knowledge don't worry if you don't know what to do uh, with a patient uh, at the beginning, uh, for, uh, personally speaking, I was doubting myself. Uh, however, you know, it's just a matter of time. If you are going every day uh, to the same place, doing the same thing every day, you have to, to learn something. At the end of the day, you will learn something. You will know how to manage. Uh, you will learn something new every day. So just don't worry about it. Um, all you have to do is... And uh, work hard and that's it inshallah uh, يعني uh, يعني وبعدين مرعم بيتكلم ويعني أنا في النهاية فعليا حاقول والله ممتاز كلامهم يعني I have nothing to add كلامهم كله ما شاء الله يعني I agree with them so من جد it's kind of difficult بس بس يعني this is life يعني في كل حاجة في البداية صعبة بس على قول معا انه آه الاتيتيود البيشنت سيفتي يا هذه الموست امبورتنت ثينك وعلى قول في الانترنشيب في صراحه في التخصص الواحد م- يعني they don't rely on interns كثير فانه الواحد ياخذ اوتسايد اوف تخصصي مره يعني يعني زي الملك فهد في المدينه ما رحته كان كان كايند اوف ديزاستر فالواحد يروح كذا بريفرال هوسبيتالز و جنرال هوسبيتالز يعني حيتعلم كثير فبس في النهايه برضه بدايه الريزيدنسي شويه غير بس مع الوقت الواحد يصير يعني كونفدنت يس اي اجري 100% كل شيء في البدايه صعب everything is hard at the beginning you will just get used to it with time just like medical school I'm, I'm 100% sure that most of us not, not all of us you know during maybe the first block of medical school where we were يعني very scared we didn't know what to do how to study and we were lost it's a it's a very normal feeling very very normal and by the time we graduate we look back at these days and we say oh my god يعني, we've changed so much and it's exactly what's going to happen to you in residency and even in internship uh, thank you doctor um Our next question is, uh, what factors did you consider when deciding to KSA on residency? And from your knowledge, uh, what are the pros and cons of residency in the kingdom with respect to residency available abroad? I think this is directed to you, Dr. Abdelaziz. This is directed to me. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, So why you been why residency in case is that, is that the question like why choosing to com- to continue residency in case A like what, what are the benefits what what are the advantages is that the question just to make sure uh, so basically they're asking like from your knowledge from your experience uh, how do you compare like and how do you recommend the case A residency like in comparison to like let's say residency in germany or usa and so uh, okay. uh to be honest uh I've, uh i've i've worked with you know with senior residents here in case i have worked with senior residents abroad and the level of knowledge uh uh is more or less the same the level of confidence is more or less the same so at the end of the day you will you know get uh, uh you know you will you will be taught appropriately you will be You'll have sufficient knowledge to manage patients, whether it's here or whether it's abroad. Uh, so uh, here we have, we have a good centers. We have a variety of cases. 
same thing uh, when, when it comes to USA or Germany. Uh, maybe like there are some minor differences in terms when it comes to culture, when it comes to, uh, you know, the healthcare system itself. Uh, maybe, you know, abroad they're uh, uh, leaning more towards, you know, electronic systems and it makes your life uh, easier uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, doing your job as a, as, a, as, a, as a resident. But when it comes to knowledge, when it comes to teaching, uh, I think, uh, we have a uh, very similar, you know, uh, level of knowledge uh, to to those, you know, coming from from abroad. Uh, this is my own humble opinion. Okay, thank you, Doctor. If uh, no one else has anything to add to that, then I'll move, uh, move to the next question, which is: uh, How do you guys manage the work-life balance in residency? والله العظيم طب ليش ما سويتوا هذا الدسكشن بعدين شو عشان يعني كذا نكون من جد تعودنا على الورك فلو احنا لسه اظن ما اعرف هل انا الحالي ولا انا لسه في صدمه حقه الورك فلو <تصفيق> فبس على قولكم من الاول انه مع مع الوقت خلاص يعني السيستم خلاص تعودنا على السيستم البيشنتس يعني وي نو هاو تو يعني خلاص الابروبريت كويستشنز الهيستوري الفيزيكال الحاجات هذه خلاص صارت كايند اوف نورمال تو اس مو مو سمثينج يعني لسه بنس يعني بنتعود عليه بس الحاجات الثانيه اللي هي النيو ديزيزز مثلا احنا خصوصا في التخصص كل يوم نسمع سندروم جديد كل يوم كذا فهذا اي ثينك الديفيكولتي الوحيده اللي حاليا يعني في في الورك فلو يعني تحتاج مني شويه ما ادري عنكم انتم كيف اي ثينك ذس كويشن ويل ديفينتلي ديفر باي سبيشالتي ويل ديفر باي by center, uh, you know, uh, like big centers like uh, KSMC, KFSH, K, uh, KSMC. Uh, these are big centers, they have a uh, high workload, they have a lot of patients. Uh, and uh, yeah, so there, are, there are days that you will, you will be drained. Uh, you will have to work, uh, you know, extra hours. Sometimes it's really difficult to balance between your, you know, your own personal life and your, uh, uh, your, your work life. Uh, like for example, me, uh, I just finished an on-call and uh, in the morning, and, and today I had this uh, beautiful, yani, alhamdulillah, uh, uh, session. Uh, so it is difficult, but uh, with time, you will you will know how to uh, uh, to balance. Uh, I'm not I'm not, I'm not an expert still. Uh, this is my third month in, in residency. I still have a long way to uh, to go when it comes to you know balance. Uh, I'm still I'm still trying to. Uh, figure out how to uh, best manage my time and uh, have you know enough time for my family, enough time uh, you know uh, for my friends and uh, uh, and of course uh, 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 my work is, is is really important that I don't ma uh, uh, I have to uh, do my job يعني, uh, as I'm supposed to يعني. What do you think, uh, Dr. Man? Well, I agree with uh, both of you and your answers. And uh, uh, it's true that we are still at the beginning of uh, residencies. Yani, this is our third month into residency. Uh, maybe it depends also on the type of rotation that you are doing. Some rotations are lighter than uh, others. So you get uh, to have more free time. Uh, and it also depends on uh, you know your mentality. Um, for example, on a, uh, yani on a personal level, um, I give you know work my full uh, focus, especially at the beginning, because I know that this is you know this is the beginning. I have to you know spend more time uh, in the hospital in order to learn and to adapt to this uh, new uh, uh, yeah, lifestyle. However, I'm sure that, you know, with time, um, once, you know, you get adapted to, to the new situation and you, once you know the system, as Dr. Maryam said, uh, it will be much more easier and uh, you will know, you know, the workflow and um, uh, you will be able to, you know, balance your, uh, uh, your life as well, your personal life as well as your uh, professional life. 
but I think that uh, still I'm not an expert uh, in this, you know, uh, aspect because I just started uh, my residency. It's still a huge help to us, Doctor. Thank you. Um, our next question is from another student in the forms. They're asking, is uh, it difficult to find a booking for the exam? And when would you advise them to uh, book for it? No, it's not difficult to find booking. Once you have your eligibility for the exam, you just go to the Prometric website and you look for, uh, uh, for, the, for the, uh, the desired date that you want to take the exam. Uh, maybe it might be difficult to find, you know, uh, times, you know, uh, at the uh, last week of the month, because that's uh, where most, you know, uh, students want to take their exam. Uh, and usually uh, when they open, you know, seats for the exam, they open them in uh, like uh, all at once. So for example, uh, uh, let's say for January, uh, the, the, the seats for January, they will open, you know, by the end of December, they will open all the seats at once. So you have to know when the seats are gonna be open so you can go and register if you want a desired seat. But if, if it doesn't matter for you, you will find the seat. Uh, thank you, Dr. Um, one of our last questions is, uh, do you have any advice for our medical students and current residents in how to succeed during uh, re residency? Okay. Uh, 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 coming to this, you know, talk and trying to benefit is is very good. I really appreciate those who, have, who attended and ask questions because it shows that you are willing to learn and willing to uh, to develop yourself. Uh, so th and this is the first step: is that you acknowledge that you know, there is something that I need to know, something that I need to ask about. So and you have, now you know. Now you can go and you know work on your CV, for example. You can uh, work on your communication skills, work on your connections, uh, and always just remember that you're doing your best. As long as you're doing your best, nothing will stop you. Just do your best, and you will reach to your where to where you want to be in life, inshallah. Just do your best. Inshallah. Thank you, Doctor. Um, I think that is one of our last questions. So. Uh, uh, by the way, to everyone in the audience who was uh, asking about the YouTube recordings, we will try our best to get them out on YouTube. Um, also, thank you for attending. Uh, also, doctors, they were asking about the uh, links to the Telegram groups and, uh, you know, which provide the SMB questions. Uh, I don't have them currently, but uh, I'm sure we can, I mean, uh, find them easily. They're not hard to find. Okay, Dr. Shiv. Sure. Um, I think it's uh, time to end now. So I'd like to again thank uh, all of the doctors who are uh, present throughout this entire session and, you know, give us all their uh, wisdom and provided advice and answered all of our questions. I'd also like to thank the audience for providing us with the questions and for attending the talk. Um, let me, uh, yes, uh, before we leave, I'd like to ask everyone to follow us on uh, Twitter, on Instagram, and if you have any questions, then do ask us on our website through our forums. Uh, if you also, if you want, then you could also contact us through WhatsApp. We have an IO WhatsApp number. I will post it in the chat now. Um, thank you. I, ha I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you again, doctors. Thank you again, audience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, Dr. Ma'an, Dr. Maryam, and all other speakers. Uh, I know you have busy, uh, you know, work days and, uh, uh, you know, having the time to prepare these presentations and give them. Uh, I really appreciate uh, your, uh, your efforts. Thank you very much. And uh, I would like to also thank Inter International Office, as well as all the audience. I hope that uh, this talk was beneficial to you and uh, that we did not waste your time. Um, and I wish you all the best, inshallah. I know that uh, this time might be stressful and it was stressful for us. However, uh, uh, just do your best. Tawakkal ala Allah. Rabbana, inshallah, yawafikum, inshallah. Wa bidnillah, tkun matching season kwayis. Wa bidnillah, tingablu fi tkhasasat illi tibguha.
وقدامك التوفيق ان شاء الله امين صراحه جزاكم الله خير انه الظهر انتم قاعدين هذا انا دوبي داخله ف يعني ما اعرف بس نصيحه اخيره دحين الفتره دي بس يركزوا على اختبارهم ما في حاجه تركزوا فيها ثانيه بعدين ان شاء الله كده ممكن على شهر ناخذ الريكومنديشن وكده فممكن ما اعرف ما ما اظنكم تكلمتوا عليها الصباح من الظهر بس انه احنا ممكن نسوي سيشن ثانيه هاو تو بريبير ذيم فور ذا انترفيوز اتس كايند اوف يعني مره امبورتنت توبيك و الانسرز يعني نيد تو بي كده فيها تريكس يعني بس الله يديكم العافيه وشكرا لكم برضه شكرا للدكتوره هاجر والدكتوره نادين من الصباح وهم يتكلموا جزاكم الله خير اني ثينك احنا موجودين دكتور مريم يعطيك العافيه الله يدعيكم العافيه شكرا لكم يعطيكم العافيه جميعا دكتور مريم ودكتور عبد العزيز اند اول ذا سبيكرز